19, shame on you. Could you pass me the water, please? Yes, I'll pour it for you. Good as is, don't you? All right, I think we're ready to start. Okay, is everybody where they're supposed to be? All right, very good. Welcome to uh, last, you know what last uh, week was? Last week was the anti penultimate class session. And I learned that word from Adrian Smith, one of our judges. So, uh, <laughs> Anti penultimate means the class before the class before the last class. So this is the penultimate class, the the second to last class, which hope which promises to be a lot of fun. My clicker died. Oh, it's not plugged in. Hold on. So today is one of the funnest days we're going to have, which is all about pitching. Okay. Uh, Lois Wise ran one of the best agencies and was one of the best. Oh, do you need to know where you're sitting? Okay, you see, look up here and sit wherever that is. Okay, you guys know where you're supposed to sit? Good. Okay, so There's a bunch of judges here. I know them all very well. They've heard from me before. We've done all this stuff about strategy and everything else. But if you cannot articulate your strategy in a way that's simple and clear and compelling to people, I don't think you have one. So that's what we're going to test today. Now, I want to tell you why that's so important with a real life example from a company I used to work with. So this company, I'm not going to name this company because it's too embarrassing and it puts me too much to shame. But this is the financial results of a company that I worked with, okay? They were doing unbelievably well on both revenue and EBITDA. Look at those margins, unbelievable. This is a company that I took public. And at the exact same time, this is what happened to their stock price. Why? Any guesses why they could have such incredible performance in the market uh, and have this kind of stock price? It's because they sucked at communicating, okay? They did not know how to present to Wall Street how good they were doing and how clear the future was. So that's why doing this is critically important. So of course, just to review, we spent the first part of class figuring out what your idea was and how to turn it into a product. Then we figured out how to turn it into something like a business, right? So that you could have you know, a strategy and you know some kind of business model and financials and maybe a company and a team and a legal structure and all that other stuff we did last week do i hope you paid attention last week because we learned about the core ingredients of the way you're going to do your messages anybody remember those key things there's some okay so you get the first cookie for today um, and we have very special cookies today because we're doing a contest about winning companies um, we have uh, unicorn poop meringue. Uh, so it's for those unicorn, the future unicorns, you can go grab one. Uh, so good, ABCs, XYZs, don't forget those today. And today we are doing your presentation, okay? Now, how are we gonna go through this? The first thing we're gonna do um, is go through a, a little review of what I think makes a great presentation. So some simple, simple tools about how to both create and how to give a great presentation. Then every single one of you is going to present very, very, very quickly to your wonderful panel of judges who are gonna come over there and listen and give you feedback. And then we're gonna have a set of finalists from each of you who are gonna come up and present one more time to the entire audience and then we will have some prizes actually and winners. Um, and we will then share all of those, uh, the results of why we came up with who those uh, winners were. And oh, by the way, you will have an opportunity to share your vote for who you think did the best job. Okay, so that's what the outline for the day is. Let's start with the first thing, which is, so how do you do this pitching thing in the first place? Okay, so, <clears throat> Uh, just to begin with, uh, you know, when I first started pitching, I, uh, or first I had to actually give a corporate presentation, I nearly um, 
well, peed my pants. Uh, so, because I didn't know what I was doing. I was nervous and terrified, uh, and I frankly did not do the work I needed to do beforehand. And I don't feel that way anymore. Now, going from where I was to where, uh, at least I think I am today, and where many of you have been and where you need to be in terms of pitching, doesn't have to be complicated. So what I've done is break it down into three steps that can help you go from being a horrible mess to somebody who can confidently and compellingly tell your story. So what are those three steps? The steps are one, figure out your strategy, do your homework, which is really answering why, what, and how. Two, figure out the presentation itself and write it in one form or another. Give that presentation. And then lastly, be ready for what happens live in a presentation, because most of us do not simply get to videotape our presentation and hand it to somebody. We have to interact with people to prove that we are doing a good job. So let's talk about each one of those. So some of this we've gone through, oh, maybe a million times already. So the, the first thing is, again, this entire thing, this is about doing the work before the work. Right, so it's very easy to just, and I've seen some uh, wonderful little submissions of you on presentations already for your assignment. But the thing you should do before you write anything down is figure out the answers to the questions before you just write them down. So doing that homework, understanding what those answers are is really, really important. So you really do need to think about your ABCs. You need to answer the question of why this thing is interesting at all, right? And if you can't figure that out, you're not going to make anybody else compelled. So remember, you want to think, and this another little hint. When you write a presentation, and all of you have to do that, the title is should always be this thing, right? Why, what future is the one that you are frustrated doesn't exist today? And we've talked about this before, but, you know, the example I, I gave I, weeks and weeks ago, uh, well, I gave one example, remember... Uh, does anybody here remember the underwear company? Yeah, so, yes. Well, oh, you guys are an underwear company, but you remember, you met Danny, right? Uh, so Tomboy X, you know, they believed in a future where everybody was going to be judged by whoever the hell they are and could express themselves in any way possible, and they believed that the way we were going to get there was through underwear. Uh, now, Bill Gates had a vision of the world, which was a computer on every desk and in every home, and his view was that the way that was going to happen was by having them computers be very cheap and easy. Okay, So figure out what your vision of the future is in a powerful way using the ABCs. XYZs, we did that all last week. Do you guys remember it? Anybody want to volunteer quickly before? What's the XYZs? Well, you can read them. So be the only X that solves Y customer problem in a unique way. Get that right. That is the what. What are you? Okay. Uh, the last one is uh, actually just figuring out how to turn that into a compelling, memorable thing. So simple matters, right? The, and and uh, I, I think I may have mentioned this to you, but Abraham Lincoln, uh, after he wrote the Gettysburg Address, which, uh, by the way, was given on my birthday, uh, 100 years before I was born, to the day. Uh, just important that you know that. Uh, so... Uh, it was seven minutes long, probably the most, it was only seven minutes long and considered by many the greatest speech in American history. And he said if he had more time, he would have made it shorter, okay? So be brief. Uh, so how do you do that? Make it very simple. Think of what one promise, if they don't remember anything else, what's the one thing that you're going to tell people? Best, if possible, those are two things that don't normally go together. Taste great, less filling. It's a great kind of promise, Okay. Uh, and then the last thing is support that promise with no more than three buckets. No more than three things. We're all tempted to tell people about the million things that we have about our wonderful product, especially technical people. want to mention all the features they have, but not think about what really matters to people, right? And, and my adjunct to this is awesome, awesome, not screwed up, okay? So I'm going to give you one quick example on this. Uh, when my wife was pregnant with our first child, we, uh, I bought a, we, a new car. Uh, I bought a Volvo Turbo 850 Turbo station wagon. Now, that car, you've heard this before. Yes. Sorry. How many of you have heard this before? A lot of you have heard this before. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, because <laughs> you came to my freaking thing. Okay, wonderful. So, I'm not going to say that, but you know, three buckets, okay? And 
you want to get motivated, motivated, and then you, don't, you want to not uh, be uh, demotivated. But in this case, I also want to say this how is really important. You need to say something about, to an investor audience, how are you going to succeed? So you may have a great idea, a great vision of the future that's super important, that's compelling, right? Huge opportunity. You may have a really good offering of some kind that's going to address that opportunity, but then you have to say something about how you're going to succeed, right? How are you going to make money and what do you need? So you need to address all of those things. This is input for your little contest which is coming in your elevator pitch, okay? Questions before I move on? Okay. So now when you're going to deliver this pitch, okay, you need to do a few things. Uh, and these are sort of the ingredients. Once you've figured out all that homework, you need to go and do uh, a little opening gambit, which warms people up. This can be incredibly short. And by the way, many of you are going to be doing uh, the, one of these many startup competitions we have here, and you're going to have to grab people's attention. So you need to come up with something that doesn't just get people to be like this. They need to be interested in some way rather than just diving right in. So you can use uh, you know, a relevant piece of news, a question like I've been asking you guys, a little anecdote, something like that, uh, that will allow you to enter into the presentation itself. Then when you give the presentation, it really, really does need to follow this form. You need to start out by telling them what you're going to tell them, okay? Then you need to tell them how you're going to tell them, which is, and then you need to tell them in exactly the way that you said you were going to tell them, and then you need to tell them what you told them. So what does that mean? First, there's this thing, it's called a title. This is the first slide. Do not put on there the name of your company. That's not a title. Tell people why they should be there. Start with that point B, right? And I, I remember, I, I've seen this many times and raised money and seen fundraising pitches where, and I, I remember one specific company was doing something incredible to change the way health insurance data was used. And they started out by saying, in clarity, investor presentation. That's what they said. The next thing they said is, saving zillions of dollars by finding dead doctors. Now that is interesting. I want to pay attention to that, okay? <laughs> so that is a point B. Say that point B, you're going to take people to that. Now immediately after that, have a slide that is an agenda. And I'm telling you this because you guys are sending in, or if you haven't already, you're sending in your, your slides. Some of you haven't sent them in yet. Have an agenda. There's multiple reasons for this. One, it's for you because you need to know the structure of your argument and you need to write that down, right? So that you will remember it and use it. And the simpler the structure, the better. I've already just told you the best thing to do that you must do is why, what, and how. So you should have at least those things somewhere in your agenda. Ideally, even when you're giving that agenda, Adrian, you know this because I've done it a million times. What's the thing I like to put on an, an agenda? In a nutshell. Yes, see, he even remembers. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want a cookie? <laughs> Adrian, do you, want, do you want some? Uh, I'll, I'll skip a cookie. Okay. All right. So uh, we need to be brief because you guys got to actually do your pitches. But you really, really, really need an agenda. And if you can, summarize your entire story on that agenda slide. On j just there. Because if you have really great evidence of you know, proof that you've done all kinds of great stuff, don't wait for half an hour, 17 slides in. Make the point on the agenda slide. Some of the best meetings I've ever had when I've been raising money never left the agenda slide. They never left that in a nutshell because the in a nutshell was clear and we just had a great discussion, right? So it's both for you and it's for your audience. The next thing is tell them again in the way in which you said you were going to tell them. There is a reason you do this. It's called setting and meeting expectations. If you are a good manager, you will do what you said you were going to do. The worst thing you could do is say, I'm going to tell you three things and tell people two or four. They will be very confused and think that you're not going to act in the way that you said you were going to, and they probably won't invest in you. So have, uh, have an agenda, follow it. I suggest use a template of some form. I guess I'll talk about that in a second, but follow it. And then, because one thing you really, really need to remember is no one actually cares that much about what you're doing, or no one cares nearly as much as you do, and no one remembers anything, you have to repeat things. So repeat everything you said again at the end. Okay? Critical. Uh, it will also help you because then you get to punctuate, once again, the things that are really working in the presentation. Lastly, 
try to make it easy on your audience by having some kind of template. It, that can be numbers, that can be anything that just kind of guides people through the presentation. Do not forget page numbers. This is super, super, super important because you look really dumb when you're giving a presentation. You go, someone says, can we jump ahead to the business model part? And you say, yeah, let's go to slide 17. And there's no slide 17. They can't, no one can find it. They're looking at the papers like, what? That, then you look like an idiot. So don't do that. Be, looking like an idiot is usually a bad way to raise money. Okay. Uh, patterns are good, numbers, buttons. Uh, if you do question, answer, question, answer, problem, solution, problem, solution, keep doing that. Don't suddenly change to something else because then once again, you will confuse people. You don't want that. Okay, uh, yeah, details matter. Errors reflect poorly on you, so proofread. Do this, you know, test it in advance. It's really helpful. Uh, okay, then you've given, you wrote your presentation, you gave it, you did all the things that I just said. Now people are gonna ask questions. This is actually the moment of truth, right? Now we're not really gonna do that here, but I'm just giving this to you because you're gonna need it when you're out there doing all of your contests and in real life. So what I've always done is I've gotten, before I've gone out on the road to raise money or to pitch anything else, I've gotten a bunch of people in a room with me and I've said, let's think of all the hardest questions that our audience can ask us, right? And, and literally, it's just be as mean as we possibly can. And this comes from PR training because the press does not want to write what you want them to write. They want to screw you up, right? So go think that way and write all those things down. If you have a team, start thinking about who's going to answer which question in advance because you do not want to fumble when you're in a meeting. You want to go, okay, if that's a numbers question, that's going to this person. And, and also know who's going to hand off from one question to the next, somebody's got to be in charge of the meeting. So get that figured out in advance. I also want to highlight the importance of this rude Q&A thing. Uh, Adrian and I worked together at Ignition and uh, it so happened in the 20 years that we were VCs, we were living during the highest concentration of world financial crisis in the history of the world. So we had some pretty tough meetings. Uh, with our investors. And I do remember one where we thought of every possible horrible question they could you know, ask after the world financial crisis. And that was the agenda for the meeting. Uh, and it went much better because we anticipated all of their questions because this was really going to be a question about worry, a meeting about worry. When you're getting the questions, a couple things. Don't tell people it's a good question. Because what happens, do you just tell everybody it's a good question? Then it doesn't sound like, like it means anything. And if you tell one person, it's, you know, it's a great question. Let's say you tell the junior analyst, what a great question. And then the senior partner asks a question and you're like, oh yeah, hmm. like you've said it was a great question three times. So just don't do that, okay? It's not, mm -mm. Repeat the question, okay? This gives you time to think which is critical, and it gives you a chance to restate the question. There's another thing that happens, which is people usually ask some weird combination of things that aren't, sometimes they're not really a question, they're just sort of like, you know, that kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> like, huh, so you have some issues. You know. Or they put three questions together, right? You need to parse those. You need to turn this into a question you can answer the way you want to, so do that. The other thing is, uh, short answers are better than long answers. Do not bullshit. It won't work, okay? It just won't work. If you don't know the answer, that's not such a bad thing. In many cases, it's a good thing. Just say, you know what? That, I have to get back to you on that. That, we need to get some more data before we can do that. Please give me your email address so that I can go back to you and have a call because now you have a follow-up, which is something you always want. Um, so again, do not, also do not sell past the close. Again, short answers. The best answer sometimes is just yes, right? And no more words, just yes. And that is coming from me. I like words, okay? <laughs> uh, again, promise to take to heart whatever. If they don't know something or they give you feedback, do follow up. And then the bookend to this is before every meeting, you do the rude Q&A, but after the meeting, you go sit somewhere and have coffee with the people you were with. Hopefully you pick somebody who's actually gonna take notes during the whole meeting and you review what worked and didn't work. And you write down the new questions that you didn't hear before and you revise the presentation. When we've raised money, I've probably revised a, a, a fundraising pitch seven to 10 times on the road. Um, just almost all the time because that's just how it goes. So 
that's uh, simple three steps to getting there. Uh, so remember, no shame in not knowing. Do not be defensive. It doesn't work, right? It makes you look stupid and not like a leader, and that's not going to work. Also, not, it, anyway, it's not good business. Uh, listen, okay? That's, and, and, and sometimes you can really learn a lot by asking a lot of questions of your audience first and retuning your entire presentation based on where their perception is. So start that, that's a good opportunity for your opening gambit. Okay, so what did I just say uh, in terms of how to go and from not knowing how to give a presentation to being ready? One, do the work before the work. Figure out your strategy as overall for, for your story. Make sure you can answer what, why, and how using the ABCs, XYZs, one, two, threes. Tell them what you're gonna tell them. Tell them how you're gonna tell them. Tell them the way you said you were. Tell them what you told them. Do your root Q&A prep. Uh, don't answer, don't don't BS. Follow up, uh, and I just wanted to highlight a few things here. So I, <clears throat> by the way, so uh, this was not. Oh, but there's a few other little hints. When you write your presentations, I would take all of your slides and just have no content. Write headlines only. Okay. Stop writing headlines that say business plan, or business model, or market size. Write what point you want to make. Write them as headlines so that it's interesting. And read your entire presentation just reading the headlines. And if it makes sense and is compelling, then you have something to go with. The body of every part of a presentation is meant to support the point you want to make, which is your headline. Okay? So do that. <laughs> okay? And that will help you. Structure, structure, structure. So what did I do here? And, and all the pictures and all that other fancy graphics and all that stuff is irrelevant, right? Con if you cannot do this with content, you're not going to succeed. You're asking people for money. That's a rational thing. So, or at least partially. So I just want to note, uh, I didn't have any pictures, okay? Uh, I had slide numbers. I said I was going to do it in three steps. I did it in three steps. I had a template, one, two, three, buttons, the whole freaking thing. Uh, and uh, I had a point B, which was to try not to be terrified. And then I summed this all up because I told you what I, I, I told you. So with that, any questions before we move on to the next? <laughs> okay, that's super fast primer, which half of you already heard twice, maybe. <laughs> so hopefully, yes, back there. So the question was about how many slides should one have depending on how much time one has. And I think there is no specific clear answer to that. Uh, I think the main thing is that you less is more. Okay. The most important thing is that you actually have the core slides that you know make the primary points you must make to make this argument. And that should be a very small number. And if you have additional slides that support each one of those points, you can add them in to give yourself a little bit more buffer. And then you should practice to see how it works. And you should give yourself quite a lot of extra time per slide because there will be questions and interruptions and all of that. Okay. Yes. Are we doing like each person in the group or however we want to do it as a group? The question was about how are we doing the, and I assume you're doing this pitch with regard to this pitch tonight. So with regard to this pitch tonight, are you giving the pitch individually, each person, or are you uh, giving the pitch just one person on behalf of the whole team? And the answer is yes. Do it however you want, but use your best advice on, on, on your own to make sure that it is the most compelling way possible. Uh, you, if you are great, you will have an opportunity to give it again. So you may have an opportunity to give somebody else to it. But it is your decision in your two to three to four minutes, if, and I would really aim for two to three, if you want to hand it off between multiple team members. Other questions? Yes, Scott. Say that again. Uh, do, so the question was, do we, are we supposed to use slides today? Uh, the answer is, do what you want. I, I would tell you, I think it is fine to have slides, but uh, mucking around with, I mean, we're going to have to move pretty quickly. So you will be judged mainly on the quality of your elevator pitch. 
uh, and, and graphics and stuff like that are probably not going to matter too much to these folks given the criteria that they have to judge you by. Okay? Any other questions before we move on to the meaty, interesting stuff? Okay, yes. Uh, you can send the, uh, no, you should use your laptop. Or, so the, oh, sorry. Ah, I broke my own rule. I'm supposed to repeat the question. If we have slides, should you send them to me or should we use your own laptop? So there's two answers to that question. One, if you're presenting up there, which you will be, then you need to keep them on your laptop if you're going to use them while you're doing your blitz little pitch. If you happen to win and become a finalist, you should send them to me unless you have an HDMI cable, because you will be bringing them up here. OK? Clear enough? All right. Excellent question. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, OK. Uh, so any, any further questions? No. All right, good. So we're going to do a pitch contest. Here's how it's going to work. We have six amazing judges. There will be five winners in the end. Each pitch needs to be three to five minutes max, and I really think it should be four minutes. You guys should use a timer, okay? Do, we, do you all have pens? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, there's three criteria by which they're going to judge your pitch, okay? Listen up, guys. Three criteria. Did, what's the quality of your communication? Was it clear and concise? Is the idea a really compelling idea? And did you think it through, okay? Was it thorough? Or was it just a sort of fun idea, okay? Those are the, the criteria. I want to introduce you quickly. You got judges, you want to stand up and turn around? Uh, I'll go here. So, Sarah. Do you, you guys all know Sarah? So, Sarah's the assistant director of the Burke Center. She's been doing about just about all kinds of things in the entrepreneurial ecosystem for how many years now? Eight years, okay? And she's been sitting on this class forever, and she's hugely helpful, so terrific. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, oh, we're going this direction. Mo. So Mo is a longtime colleague, CEO of one of, uh, former, one of our companies, and now CEO of a new company, Pipe17, and also a co-investor with me on a number of projects, right? Yep. Yes. I think. Ishani. Shani's product lead at Madrona Venture Labs. Uh, you want to say anything else about yourself? No, I, I help build startups uh, at Madrona. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Laurel. Laurel is managing director at West River Group on West Coast Ventures, right? Or uh, Pacific Northwest. Pacific no. North, Northwest Ventures. Also has done that in a number of different environments. And if you have legal questions, you might want to talk to her because she's also an attorney. Uh, Adrian Smith. Hello. Uh, we've worked together forever. He's all, also really important to this entire program. He's like kind of one of the boss people uh, on the board of the entire Burke Center and all that kind of stuff. And a VC and, and brilliant engineer. Tom uh, is, well, Tom's CEO of both a company I work with as well as runs a boutique VC and former senior, senior dude at Amazon. And then also even an accountant. Yes. Which is <laughs> kind of wild. So have some numbers, okay? Okay, so any questions for you guys before we get started? So uh, get ready, get set, go to your teams. I will wander around, and we're just going to start pitching, okay? Yes. What? You are going to go where you want, right? But you, get to, you have to pick one of these sections. Pick a section, okay? Yeah. All right, good. And, and so let's see, how many, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five times five, 25. So all right, we have a total of, we have a total of like a half an hour. Four, a half an hour, 35 minutes. What? You didn't put a team name down. What? Then just don't, then they will, it's fine. What's your team name? Pitch. You still pitch. Okay.
Hi, how's it going? I, I don't know. Just uh, we'll, we need a judge. they'll come. Don't worry. Wait, what do we have over here? So, oh wait, Tom. So your stencil, you should be on this side. Well, wait, hold on. Where, where did everybody go? Okay, so we have one. Just a second. Hold on. Yeah, you can do what you want. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Where's the sixth judge? All right, so wait, hold on. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so they need to just come down. Okay, that's yes. Question. So we're up in front left. So is that right That's here? this way. That's just right yeah. Here. We don't have space for all three of our team members. Should we just sit somewhere farther back? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Back. Who's back right? Both doing front lap. Oh, yeah, where's. Okay, wait a minute. I think we, I think we are screwed up here. I think we have. Sorry, I think we have. When you're done, I think we need you to move somewhere else. Yeah, can we just. When you're done, confer. Okay, sorry to ruin your pitch. Remember, you have not a lot of time. Okay. You have five minutes per person max. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're under. We're under. How do you go? Well, All right. I sent you comments. Yes, I saw that. Okay. Uh, a lot of work. Thank Just you. good to. You guys did a lot of good stuff, but learned some from some of that. All right. Yeah. So we were just talking to Sarah about this, but for because we did we're doing HIC, mm -hmm. so we only have a one minute pitch. That That's fine. Awesome. Let's give that instead. Okay. Perfect. Less is more. Oh, all of a sudden Less is more. Oh yeah, like, totally. Hey, ours is so much shorter. Less is more. This is great. I appreciate it. Love it. Remember, five minutes each, max. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, 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 we're the first one was a minute and a half. Okay, good.
Okay, you got to move on. Next pitch. Yeah, including. Yeah. So I just want to remind you guys, judges, please do not stay with people for longer than five minutes total. You each have like five to six to get through, so we gotta we gotta keep cranking through, guys. And if you have a presentation that's only one minute long, hooray for you. Good, good feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I think it's a smart Value thing. Feedback. She's a smart person. Yeah. yeah. Good. So how does it work? Do they, uh, they take turns coming around, or we just get one chance? You get one chance. Because we only have six judges, yeah. we got to get through everybody. But you can you can keep practicing based on the feedback in case you win. Oh. Right, because then you'll you'll uh, you know get up there again. Did you receive the slides? When did you send them to me? I hope so. <laughs> oh, hey, one other thing.
Has anyone not pitched? No, everyone's pitched. Okay, good. Okay, judges. It's time to wrap up. Soon, please. Judges, time to wrap up. <laughs> One minute warning.
Friends, we are now going to confer uh, in our secret little conference circle here to come up with the 10 finalists who will come to the front and give their pitches once again so we can have final prizes after that. Okay? Thanks. Uh, hello, clarifying question. Excuse me, audience, I have a question. How many teams are claiming to be Sensol Labs? Raise your hands. Because we have three different people who judged Sensol, Sensol Systems. Okay, because we have three different... You got... Because you got, you got judged three times, so I'm not going to give you three entries into the... Th okay, so, all right, good. Uh, so there's only one, right? Okay, good.
Simpson as well? I didn't. You didn't? Oh, uh, yeah. That's pretty funny. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Okay. Time to announce our finalists. Okay. Uh, I'm going to announce all of them. There are 10 finalists. And then we're going to go through you. Each one at a time, you're going to come down. So as I name you, come to the front and get ready to give your pitch. Plant form. Come down to the front. Get ready to give your pitch. Glide assist. Back track. Excelsior. It sounds like something from a movie. Where? Excelsior, where are you guys? Okay. Rest nest. Arogia. Ar Arogia. Sorry, did I pronounce that wrong? Okay, you'll pronounce it right. Good. I hope so. Uh, blend. Is that, did I say that right? Blend A. Blend -a. Blend. Okay. In French or something. Uh, <coughs> sense all systems. And you do not get to come up here three times. <laughs> Joy walk. And auto magic marketing. All right. Can we steal a mic? So that people can have a mic, yeah. All right. Uh, so, judges, do you have your forms? You're going to get ready to do this all over again. No, I mean, well, here, just just use a piece of paper. Just this is super organized, guys. Okay, this is kind of like the Democratic nomination process. Uh, okay, so uh, <coughs> who wants to go first? If not, uh, okay, you guys want to go first. <laughs> Terrific. And you are? Backtrack. Backtrack. For the first time I had to cut somebody's arm off to save their life, I was very nervous. I wasn't sure we had the right diagnosis, but I did know that if we had the right diagnosis and failed to amputate, he'd be dead in an hour. Fortunately, at Harborview, where this was all going down, they have a great microbiology lab, and within the hour, I knew that our diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis was right. Flesh-eating bacteria to the lay press. So we did the amputation, and he lived long enough to give me a, credit card, <laughs> a Christmas card for the next 10 years. <laughs> what if I'd been in the community or in a rural area or a, in a third world nation? Uh, what would you have done then? To address this problem, Backtrack is developing a small, portable, rapid, point-of-care diagnostic device for detecting bacterial infections in under one hour. Two to five percent of all surgeries will, will result in some kind of surgical site infection. That's greater than the probability of cracking a double yolked egg. In 2018, hospital acquired infections accounted, uh, cost hospitals $34 billion in the U.S. alone. The current diagnosis, diagno, diagnostic methods for detecting a bacterial infection either take days to get results or they require big, bulky, expensive equipment that costs up to $70,000 and also requires skilled technicians to run the devices. Our target cost for our device is just $100. We're creating a simple and user-friendly device that can be used in diverse clinical settings, ranging from emergency departments to urgent care, urgent care centers to rural clinics in developing countries. Our modular design requires, uh, our modular platform only requires minimal resources so that it can be used all around the world. We are targeting the $19 billion point of care diagnostics market. And with our team, we're excited because Backtrack is trying to address big problems while they're still small. Thank you. Stay here. Stay a minute. Yep. All right, who's next? Who's next? Okay.
Excelsior. All right. The federally mandated Americans with Disabilities Act requires cities to have a plan for the 65 million Americans with visual and physical disabilities. Cities have a moral responsibility to plan for their most vulnerable populations, but struggle to execute on disability projects. Excelsior is a web-based infrastructure project management manager for cities to reduce costs associated with hiring consultants, fragmented planning, and infrastructure funding while offering legal protection. An average ADA plan is estimated to cost about $171,000 over about six months, not including plan updates and amendments with a consultant. Excelsior gives an instant result at a total cost of about $25,000 annually <laughs> and has lights. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get extra points for that. <laughs> plan creation at the city's pace. By synthesizing data using a customizable criteria matrix, Excelsior is a software as a service for city planners to create ADA plans and use funds effectively through a guided integrated service. Our, our, our algorithm has already been used for plans in small cities in eastern Washington. We are the only web-based manager that solves municipalities' struggle to find and afford specialists or project management resources in a cost-effective, in-house, and simple interface. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Let's stay over there. All right, who's next? Are you, okay. Let's go. And you are? We are Glide Assist. Hello. As a pediatric anesthesiologist at Seattle Children's Hospital, Dr. Shea knows that once he puts an infant under anesthesia, he only has seconds to put a breathing tube into the infant's windpipe. He can see the entrance to the windpipe quite clearly, but the rigid tube that he uses to place, the rigid wire that he uses to place the tube is at the wrong angle, so the tube refuses to go in. He knows that every intubation attempt with this wire traumatizes the tissues, but failure to intubate can lead to cardiac arrest, brain injury, and even death. This is a common scenario in infants. There are over 1.5 million infant anesthetics that happen every year. Our team, Glide Assist, has made the only medical device that will allow pediatric anesthesiologists to reliably place endotracheal tubes in children on the first attempt. With Dr. Shea's help, we are patenting our prototype, which features a foolproof double articulating tip for safety and precision. Should your child need an operation, we want you to feel safe, knowing that they are being intubated with glide assist, not a rigid wire. Thus, we invite you to visit our booth and help us make pediatric intubations safer, quicker, and easier to perform. Thank you. All right, who's next? Great. <laughs> Pardon me? Oh, Rest nest. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Imagine laying down on a hard, uncomfortable surface in a tight, narrow space with barely any light and screaming loud noises all around you. If you've experienced this, hopefully you've been in an MRI. As you can imagine, staying still in this kind of environment is very challenging. Any motion at all leads to a blurry image, and a blurry image makes the radiologist's job that much harder to diagnose. That is important because you want an accurate diagnosis if you're getting scanned. My name is Gilad Tabul, and I'm a member of RustNest. We are a team with the vision of increasing accurate diagnoses for MRI images. Our product is a win-win solution. It provides patients with more comfort and it reduces their motion. Similarly, it increases the accuracy of the image for the radiologist to diagnose from, thus increasing the accuracy of their diagnosis. Our product can save hospitals hundreds of thousands of dollars every year by decreasing the need for repeat scans. Similarly, it opens up more opportunities for more scans to be done, thus increasing 
the amount, the need of more scanners. This benefits companies such as GE or Philips that produce MR machines. If you're interested in virtually experiencing what an MRI is like and to see how our product improves that experience, come visit RustNest at booth 99. Thank you. All right, who's next? I'm sorry. Go. You sure? Okay, mine's um helps people a little bit less health wise, but <laughs> you know, mentally. Let's go with that. All right, so this, I'm the plant form, um, and whenever you guys are ready, um, I would like you to think about your hobby and what you do in your spare time. And ask yourself, can you buy everything that you need for that hobby in one spot? Is there one store that can help serve your needs or one community to help you reliably satisfy whatever questions you might have to answer that, uh, to answer them? Well, unfortunately for a lot of people in the houseplant community, there's no solid yes to that answer. Uh, there's no one unique place where they can purchase everything and then kind of seek, to their, seek their friends for consultations. And we want to fix that for them with the plant form. So the plant form is an all-in-one marketplace that makes it easier for users to buy, trade, and sell plants to their heart's content, along with uh, value-added features that allow users to share their content and grow their hobby with user-generated things such as collection lists, community events, uh, pictures, photos, uh, and other plant-related things that are relevant you know, to within, within plant species. So why not have a one-stop shop? The plant industry currently boasts an annual 50 billion in sales and with a 2.5 projected growth uh, into 2022. And our research found that the average plant hobbyist buys about five plants per month and spends an approximate $80 on these plants. And they will do this across multiple platforms such as Facebook, eBay, Etsy, you name it. Neither of which really fits the one set bill and each has their own handful of problems. For example, there's no reliability when purchasing plants from Facebook. eBay takes a glorious 10% commission on every plant you sell, and neither one of them allows you to trade plants with anybody across the country. So for a small and competitive commission fee on every sale, the plant form can fix this, and it will help users buy more plants for less, combined with plans to expand into the B2B sector into the future with much larger portions of commission sales, we hope to meet our vision of putting a plant in every house. All right. All right, who's next? Okay, oh yeah, you had your hand up like 10 times. Okay. Hello, I'm Lorenzo. So I'll just start now. Over 6,000 pedestrians were killed last year in the U.S. alone. That's one person every 88 minutes. Just let that sink in. A major reason this happens is that drivers simply do not see pedestrians well enough in poorly lit conditions, such as rain or fog. What we seek to do is we seek to improve this. How? We believe that all these pedestrian deaths, all these pedestrian deaths are preventable. We can do this using a, cra a crosswalk that not only makes the pedestrians more visible, but is also more affordable. Our modular tiles go over the road and illuminate the pedestrians from underneath as they walk across it, alerting vehicles of their exact position well before the car reaches a crosswalk, giving the driver ample time to react and slow down, saving these pedestrian deaths. Our crosswalks are safe, affordable, affordable because as we overlay on top of the road, we are cutting costs in terms of installation and infrastructure. <laughs> so if a city needs to repave, we can remove our crosswalk, allow them to do their thing, and go right on top again. But don't take our word for it. We've talked to cities, municipalities around the Washington State area, and private campuses, such as Facebook, uh, Microsoft, and the University of Washington. And they've all agreed to beta test our crosswalks once we're ready for production. We currently have a working prototype, but we need funding to polish our product, develop our manufacturing process, and test for regulations and durability. So the next time you step on the street, your every step is illuminated. Thank you. All right. All right, who's next? You ready? Okay. Did you know? Sorry. I wasn't sure if it was on. 
Did you know 90% of startups fail today? Wonder why? One of the top five reasons why they fail today is because they don't have expertise in the core business domains that they need. Uh, Auto Magic Marketing Service is the only low cost service that helps small businesses achieve and measure 10x their monthly customer growth by seamlessly connecting businesses with best fit influencers through our wide selection, seamless workflows, and trouble-free customer support. As a service, we help businesses and individuals drive new levels of productivity through complex data mining and analytics to create closer links between brands and influencers by automating the process of search so you don't have to spend hours uh, looking for influencers and you can get the time back to go back to your core business. All right. Who's next? Who, who am I? Okay. Everybody's so polite. <laughs> um, hi. Um, imagine living in a city like Seattle and you want to walk to work or you want to walk to buy groceries or just go out on an evening stroll. But the usual um, Google Maps that is available tells you only the shortest way to reach your destination. But is walking only about reaching there the fastest? Do I want to reach the office on an uphill slope, all sweaty? Do I want to get my morning coffee before I reach school? Uh, if I'm asthmatic, maybe I want to take a route with less traffic on it so that I can breathe better. Or I want to kids, uh, send my kids to school from the sa safest route uh, based on and avoid the university district. So we bring to you, <laughs> we bring to you Joy Walk. Um, a play on the word jaywalk uh, puts the fun into your everyday walking. Uh, how do we do this? We use APIs and data, um, data algorithms to figure out the weather, the time of the day, the GPS location, the crime, uh, real-time crime data, and so on to uh, get you the best possible walk. We can get you the most scenic walk, we can get you the safest walk, we can get you the most comfortable walk based on your preferences. So we curate the best walk for you. Um, uh, how, do, um, how do we make money? We, we get revenues uh, for the user, it is completely free, but we make revenues through ad listings from um, entertainment venues, coffee shops, eateries, uh, maybe, uh, you know, weekend markets and so on on our platform. Uh, so currently we are raising money to uh, develop a prototype and to test our markets as well as uh, develop a go-to uh, go to market strategy. So in case you are interested in making money and <coughs> give us a call on our uh, booth, we hope in the long run, we hope to make our platform an alternative to coffee chats, make it more of a socializing app and make it a walk chat in the long run. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I have slides. So uh, do you want to give I me them? Do you have? I emailed it to you as well. All right. Why don't you go, and I will look for slides. Do you mind if I go without the mic? No, uh, you might for the recording. OK, go All right. <laughs> oh. Wait, here. You can do this. Oh, Thank you so much. Plug that in somewhere. There we go. We go. Luckily, my shirt is built in, especially for this. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. in the morning, and Asha jolts awake to the warm flow of blood between her legs. She rushes to wash her sanitary cloth and hides to dry it in the dark, embarrassed about the situation. The next morning, she wakes up to cries from her children, only to be greeted by the sight of painful rashes across their skin. This story resonates with many families across the globe who have no other alternative for sanitation but to hand wash their clothes in ponds and rivers, often full with bacteria and industrial pollutants. My name is Anushree, and here at Arogya, we believe that a means for proper health and sanitation is a basic human right, and nothing less is acceptable. Named after the Sanskrit word for health and freedom from disease, Arogya is the only non-electric washer and dryer which can discreetly clean, dry, and disinfect dirty clothing at an affordable cost. Come by Arogya's booth and see how our small product can make big impacts in human and societal health. Thank you.
Go for the mic. <laughs> All right, good. Sorry, go. How does it feel to be part of two different communities? I'm sure everybody sitting here has a different answer to that. To me, it means being both Indian and American. And oftentimes, it's confusing. It's confusing being part of two languages, two traditions, two worlds. Growing up, this meant presenting two different versions of myself, one at home and one out in public. I remember at school, I would often hide my lunch to push away unwarranted stares and questions like, what is that? That looks so weird. And dance performances were a whole nother struggle. I would be more embarrassed to walk downtown in my traditional langa than for the dance performance itself. So growing up, I worked hard to build these barriers between my American and Indian communities. This is why I, I am creating a fashion brand that empowers Asian Americans to embrace their true identities. Tell me to click. Yes. Okay. Click. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Blend is the only clothing line that mixes together current American trends with a flair of South Asian prints and styles. We create clothing that is both unique, trendy, but casual enough for everyday wear. With our clothing, we hope to empower all A South Asian Americans to uh, to display and celebrate their unique backgrounds. Additionally, um, additionally, Asian Americans spend $1,215 per year on clothing, which is 22% higher than the average American, which means that South Asian Americans are very fashion forward and a great market to target our clothing towards. Thank you. All right, I want all of the contestants to please face the screen, okay? Because <clears throat> now we are going to actually ask for the audience's opinion before we get the judge's opinion. Okay, I'm going to just name the teams. Sarah, will you watch with me? Okay, good, great. So uh, I'm going to ask, when I name a team, I want you to raise your hand if it was your favorite of the 10 finalists. Okay? Just raise your hand. Yeah. No, they cannot. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. Yeah, but you can't, you got to not, uh, or we can just, so here we go. Yes. Backtrack. Raise your hands. And if people want to vote for them, please raise your hands. Okay, remember you're voting for the number one. Great, next. Excelsior. Raise your hand if you think it's the number one. Okay. Glad Assist. Raise your hand if you think it's the number one. Plant Form. Raise your hand if you think it's the number one. <laughs> Sensor Systems. You only get to vote once per person. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Raise your hands if you think it's the best one. Okay. Auto Magic Marketing. Raise your hand if you think it's the best one. Joy Walk. Raise your hand if you think it's the best one. Orugia. Raise your hand if you think it's the best one. And lastly, Blend. Raise your hand if you think it's the best one. Restnet, raise your hand if you think it's the best one. Do not put me in charge of anything. <laughs> okay, great. Are you guys, you know, you're good? All right. So now, contestants, return to your seats. Thank you very much for all that you did. Really, really good. Good work. Okay, uh, you guys need to sit. Hey, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. It's very important because we're going to talk about, you don't get to leave. We're going to take your attendance off if you leave. You're going to fail the class if you leave right now. Okay, so 
we need a few minutes of your time before we announce the winners, and then we're going to tell you what happens at the end of this class and how you're going to get your grade pass or fail. So you might want to stay for that, okay? So sit down, be quiet for a few minutes, and we will confer and announce the finalists. Thank you.
So here are the outcomes. I hopefully will get them right. Oh, oh, by the way, here's about your grades. Okay, 20% of your grade is attendance. Uh, see, don't leave early or we're just going to take you off. All right. And that includes next week, which is going to be very exciting. 20% of the surveys that I want to clarify for surveys. Just filling them out means you get all the points you can get for a survey. There's no greater or lesser points. You just have to fill the bloody thing out. Okay. And there's one more survey. The pitch, which you should, all, and by pitch, I don't mean what you just did today, but the actual PowerPoint presentation, which you were supposed to put in your assignment, that counts for 30% of your grade. That was supposed to already be due, but maybe you can have like till midnight or something. And then there is the business plan, which needs to be filled out, hopefully using everything you've learned. And that's it. Okay. Hint, hint, read things. You'll get a better outcome. Yes. If you submit under the team name once, the grade will count for those two submissions for the whole team, for every person in the team. Okay. Oh, but the question was, uh, sorry, I didn't repeat the question. If you're in a team, can one person submit? Yes, one person can submit so long as the team is named. Thank you. All right. So here's our winners and some feedback. Okay. The first winner, which was for the best ideal, Excelsior. Okay. And what you win, if it ever comes out, is a non-stinky t-shirt, okay? <laughs> Isn't that great? So I just so you know, at the beginning of class, the first survey you filled out Kickstarter projects that you liked. I funded them, okay? These, if they ever ship, these will be your prizes, okay? And I have given out two over the entire course of doing this. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, the winner for the best pitched is Backtrack. All right. Very nice story, very nicely told. I also wanted to say uh, on the, the uh, idea, you also did a really nice job of wrapping it up and having all cutting, uh, covering all your points. So very nice, a lot of improvement here. Okay, uh, then the next award goes to, let's see here. Oh yeah, the most thorough. Plantform, where are you? You win the most thorough. You thought about all the specifics and angles and you actually knew, I mean, you just geek out on this stuff. So that was, it showed through. Okay, and then the People's Choice Award. This is a really weird thing, uh, it's finger bot. I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, that goes to Glide Assist. You got more votes than anybody else. And then the amazing winner of the overall best pitch actually gets a real award because remember, do you guys remember uh, our, our panelist last week, uh, Caitlin, who works on Kickstarter campaigns? Well, she gave me this. Uh, and that goes to Sensol. Okay. And uh, <laughs> What that is, is a, a smell, an alarm clock that wakes you with smell. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so I hope that your product is more popular and more effective than this. All right, you can come down and get that. So uh, great work. Oh, and all of you get this prize, which is I did donate to this thing, which plants, I don't know, it plants trees using uh, drones. And it, so, yeah, so there you go. Uh, thank you guys very much. I want to highlight for next week, we have a really cool next week. We have uh, Amy Nelson, CEO and founder of The Riveter, which is the biggest network for professional women. And we're going to go through a sort of summary of the entire class and thoughts to leave by. You really need to come because there will be an opportunity there for you to make up some points in your class, OK? Uh, do the final survey and fill out uh, your business plan assignment. And lastly, don't forget this whole exercise was not just for fun, okay? It's really, really, really important. Practice, 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 and those things will be true for you. Thank you guys very much for participating. Thank you, judges. You were awesome. Have a good week. Wash your hands.